Brown, welcome back to my Apple podcast, the podcast that makes a personal connection to everything Apple. I'm going to continue my series on art apps for the iPad. This is part one, where I'm focusing on drawing and painting apps. And for this episode, I'm going to focus on Sketch Club. Now, what you're looking at here is the first screen that comes up when you open Sketch Club. You'll notice that you have color swatches on the right. If you go to the top right hand corner and hit that little return key button, you'll notice you have a ton of options for opening a new project or loading an existing project to save your project. You can actually begin a recording. This feature enables you to record the activity that you're doing on the screen and save it as a video file later on. That's the reason why I cannot do a screen capture of this because of these features being built into the application itself but I will play a video back to show you how all the features are used as I record my activity. Keep going down, you can import content from iTunes or from your photo library, and you can send to your friends via email, you can send to Facebook or to iTunes, you can send back to your photos library, to your printer, and to Twitter. Next to that top right icon is a world icon, basically symbolizing the internet. This is where you can join other members of Sketch Club and post your projects online. In the center top, you'll see a square. This is a symbol for accessing more nuanced color selection. So instead of the fixed color swatch that you have on the right, you can access a color wheel, which allows you to customize the range of colors and tones that you want to create. Next to that, is the controls for your lines, different types of lines that you want to add. You have, of course, the freehand, or you have the option to just draw a straight line or circle or square. You'll notice these are the same features available in Sketchbook Pro, with the exception of the option in the mirroring tool to mirror horizontally and vertically. And then next to that, you'll see a little control tool for controlling the size of your brush, the opacity, the smoothness, etc. And this will vary depending on the tool that is selected. So this is corresponding with the use of the vector tool. So I'm actually going to go through and show you all the tools that are available. And as you can see, you have a range. But if I would if I choose brush tool and then choose the control panel, you see I have a lot of options because they're only relevant to the brush tool. So in this case I could use different types of brush textures and so forth. You can control the size and the opacity. However, I was to go down a little bit and say choose sketchy and then pull up the control panel. You see I have a different menu of options for that particular tool. Now let's look at layers. Layers is on the top left and again this is more of a minimalist way of accessing all the different tools but once you open up this layer then all of a sudden things get very sophisticated. For one, you can control the layer opacity, but it has all these various different blend options. So if you happen to be using five or six different layers, you then can control how those layers influence one another, depending on which option that you choose. You then have the, you have the option for color fill. You have the option to load image. And I'm going to show you some features associated with this in my demo. You'll scroll down, you'll see you have all kinds of backgrounds but you also have different coloring book options and just a ton of media that you can import including accessing your photo library. Okay, as I promised, I'm going to show you a screen capture of my activity on the screen recreating this abstract work that you see here. I basically used the vector tool to do so. But what I want to reveal is how I was able to use the vector tool to create different types of layers and transparencies in order to produce this effect. Okay, I'm gonna speed up the video just a bit, but I'm gonna walk you through the process of everything I did to create this final product. Okay, right now I'm using the vector tool, and I'm going through the palette of colors on my right-hand side, and just adding different colors using the vector tool. This is a great way to use the vector tool or any one of the brushes to create a work of art. I imported a layer and then made that layer transparent, which enabled that background to come through. Then I added a photo on a top layer and then took the eraser tool and erased the photo so that the vector designs underneath could come through. So 
So I'm using the transparencies with the vector layers and then using the erase tool on the photograph to reveal the vector designs underneath. Pretty awesome. And that's Sketch Club. I'm just touching the surface here, but you kind of get an idea of what you can do. And what's really great is you can record your activity. And it doesn't record all the tools that are on the screen, but it does control every mark that you make. And you can actually pause as well. I mean, you can take a break, go to the bathroom, and come back and start drawing again. It will not record the pauses. It will only record the marks on the screen. And you also have the option to speed it up. So in this case, it was sort of like time and a half, or you could double time it, triple time it, however fast you want it to be, you can set that timing accordingly. You can add music as well, and then save it to your library. So Sketch Club is another really nice alternative to a drawing and painting app. I hope you enjoyed this episode of My Apple Podcast. My name is Tim Brown. Check me out at myapplepodcast.com. I'll see you next time.